Hey everybody, this is Jeff with Sweet Take and I've got a cool After Effects tutorial to show you today that is all about Zaxworks awesome plugin 3D Warps. Zaxworks has a ton of cool plugins that do lots of cool 3D effects right inside of After Effects like their Pro Invigorator and Pro Animator. But for this particular project that I was using, 3D Warps was the perfect tool and I'm going to show you all about it. This is the uh, project we're going to make. Go ahead and take a look. You can see we have a little leaf here that kind of flutters around in the breeze and flaps around and then a bit of a text build on top of that. So there's a bunch of stuff going on in here, a bunch of layers kind of happening. Um, there's some particular in there, some displacement, displacement maps, some cool stuff. I'm going to show you how to make the whole thing and at the core of all this is Zaxworks 3D Warps plugin. And we're going to show you how to use that. Plus I'm also going to give you some tips on how to speed up the workflow process and speed up rendering time and preview time and just kind of give you a good idea of a workflow to use when you're using a product like 3D Warps from Zaxworks. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and create a new comp and we're gonna call this tree background. Uh, 1280 by 720 HD, square pixels, 29.7 is good. 13 seconds is the length of our final comp so we'll just go ahead and create a comp like that and then we will take our image and what I want to show you here first is what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this background of this tree and the leaves kinda of happening we'll get to the leaf later and you can kinda of see that the leaves are kinda of, if you look up in this area here you can see the leaves kinda of look like they're blowing a little bit and the wind and there's these kinda of little maybe fuzzed out or blurred out insects kinda of buzzing around in the area there so we're going to go ahead and make this background first. There's a kind of a bunch of stuff happening in there. And this is all made from a single still image that I got off the free stock exchange. So I didn't even pay for it. It's nice and free. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop this into our comp. And first thing we'll do is change its position to 640 by, let's say, 300. And we'll scale it down to... Oh, I don't know, about 34%. Just guessing here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make our little insects, our little kind of insect things that kind of fly around in there. So to do that, we're going to use particular. So we'll go ahead and make a new solid. We'll call this particular. Make it comp size. Color doesn't matter. And then we'll go ahead and add particular to that solid. Uh, I'm using Particular 2 in this case. Uh, there's really nothing out of the ordinary that you need Particular 2 for. You can use any version of Particular, and you can probably even use um, Particle World or anything like any other kind of particle generator to do this. It's really kind of simple. We'll go ahead and turn that layer off so we can see what we're doing. Here's the default for Particular. And I'm going to kind of go through this Particular stuff kind of quick um, just so we can uh, get things rolling here. First thing we want to do is change this to about, oh, I don't know, four particles per second. We'll make it a box emitter because we want, we want kind of the insects to come from all over, not from a single point. So we want to make a box emitter that's the same size as, as the comp. So we'll go ahead and make this 1280 by 720 by 1,000 pixels deep. So now we've got this nice box emitter where particles are going to be admitted from the entire area of this box. We'll change our velocity to, we'll bring it down to about 50. And another, one of the nice things that we have in particular too, I guess, is that is this pre-run function, that they've moved it from the options panel down here into the emitter section. So I'll just go ahead and ramp that up to 100. So that means particles have already been emitted by 100% once we're at the beginning because we don't want to wait until the particles get emitted. Okay, that's all we need in the emitter. Now our particle, we're going to go ahead and change the life to about 10 seconds. We want them to live for quite a while. And we'll change the, we'll, we want a lot of random, randomness kind of through everything we do here. So we'll ramp up that um, particle randomness, change the size to... About 11, it'll do. We're just using the stock sphere particle. And size randomness, we'll ramp that up. 
You want a nice good variety there. So we have like big, mis you know, big honeybees and little tiny gnats and mosquitoes and things like that. And our opacity, we'll change the randomness here. Ramp that up too, so our opacity is different. We want them. To, we want to, We don't want them popping on and off. So we'll just give our uh, opacity over life a nice smooth dissolve on, dissolve off. So there we go. Now we're getting. Now we're getting a little better. Things are kind of dissolving on and off, kind of floating around, looking pretty good. Let's change the color. the The color I was using was kind of a nice yellow color, and the values I have for that: 70, 24. 81. Give it a nice kind of yellow. There we go. Change our transfer mode to add. So they can glow just a little bit here. And now we've got, you can see we've kind of got the basic kind of idea that we want. We've got about the amount and the size that we want, but the motion of them you know, isn't quite right. They're floating around, but they're still kind of moving in straight lines. We want to add some randomness, some kind of as if there were little bugs kind of buzzing around. So to do that, we'll go down to our physics and we'll add a little bit of gravity, not a whole lot. We'll go to about three with the gravity. And then the big one here though is our turbulence field under air. Go to turbulence field and we want to affect position. We want to ramp that up to about 150. And have our fade in time set to zero. And so now you can see they kind of they kind of buzz around. And actually, one of the neat things you can do is you click this visualize fields, and you can kind of see now what kind of a motion path they're going to take. So if you change it to change this back to zero, you'll see they're they're not going to they're going to pretty much go in straight lines. And then as you ramp this up, you can see how kind of wacky their motion path is going to be as you ramp it up. So if you really ramp it up, you can see how kind of wacky they would be. So right around 150 is kind of where we want. Keep it at smooth. Keep everything else where it is. And we'll click that off. Let's go ahead and do a little quick preview. All right, everything's looking pretty good right there. They're kind of buzzing around. Nice and smooth. Nice spring, summer day. Mid-afternoon. Nice stuff. We'll turn back on our tree like that there we go that's looking pretty good color match is nice the motions kind of nice now what we want to do in our comp we got to, we got to refine this just a little bit more because I don't want bugs kind of flying around in this sharp focus area because that'll kind of give away the illusion that they're not bugs that they're just particles we want to keep them confined to this really out of focus area of the photograph because then That'll help us sell it more, as if they're bugs flying around being backlit by the sun that are completely blown out of focus, and you get this nice lens blur going on here. That's kind of the only thing that's going to keep us. So we got to mask them all off from this area. So to do that, we can't just draw a mask on particular because that won't do anything because the mask does not affect the effects on a layer. We have to pre-compose it first. So we'll go ahead and pre-compose this. And then we can just take our pen tool and kind of draw... A mask and you can do this as smooth or as rough as you want um, right around that area there and now you can see we've got the particles there so we just need to change our mask from add to subtract and we'll feather that out oh about that much so there's not a hard kind of stop and they can kind of fade in and out as they go past that line There we go. Now we're looking pretty good. So we got our bugs flying around. Now we've got to put that motion in the trees as if there is some wind blowing around there. And we're going to do that through a simple displacement map. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and start off with making another new solid. And we'll call this Fractal Noise. Comp size, color doesn't matter. We can just pick a different color just for giggles. And we're going to add fractal noise to this. Frac, fractal, I spelled it wrong. Fractal noise, OK. And this is going to be really simple. We're not going to do a whole lot to this at all. So we'll go ahead and change, just bump up the contrast just a little bit so we can get a little deeper blacks, a little whiter whites. And then we're going to just set a simple time expression to the evolution. Time 
times 80, something like that, just so it moves a little bit. Because all we want is just some white and black kind of random patterns kind of fluttering around like that. And that's going to give us what we need for our displacement map. Go ahead and pre-compose this, because it'll have to be pre-composed. We'll drop it to the bottom, turn it off, and then on this layer, we're going to add the displacement map. Displacement map effect. And what this effect will do is it will take that fractal noise layer with the black and white information, and we will um, we'll tell it to look at that layer, and then it'll use that black and white information to warp so to sort of warp um, this layer. We'll change these to luminance, and we'll change D, we'll ramp these up to about 20. And so now you can see, all right, and stretch map to fit. There we go, that's what we need. Okay, now you can see what's happening. You can kind of see the whole layer there. Let's zoom that up just a little bit. You can see the whole layer there. You can kind of see it now. It's kind of the whole thing's kind of warping and kind of floating around with as that fractal noise animation as the evolution r rolls around in that. But again, we only want to confine this to the leafy soft focus area where the leaves are because the trunk wouldn't be blowing, right? So that's simple to do. We'll just go ahead and duplicate the layer. And we'll just take the top layer and we'll just draw another simple mask in the area that we want there. And we'll leave that as add so you can see... No, we'll have to change that to subtract again. So there we go. We have our, our leaf area there. Feather that again. So we don't want any hard edges. There are no straight lines in nature. And so now this animation will have... This top half has the fluttery leaves. And then we'll just delete the effect from the bottom layer. And so you can see the bottom layer doesn't do anything. And then we add the top layer to it. And there we go. So now just that top layer blows around. Turn back our particles. There we go. Happy little insects fluttering around on a spring day. So that's our background. Next, we're going to move on to actually animating the leaf as it flies into place. So here we have our tree comp. We will go ahead and drop this into another comp. And this comp here, we'll, we'll, we will rename main comp. Okay. This is a little untidy, but that's okay, right? So we have our background fluttering around there. Everybody's happy. Next, we're going to add the leaf as it flies in. Let's just take another look at that. Let's see what we're going to make here. This leaf kind of flies in, flutters around. You can see there's a couple things going on here. And what you'll notice is the leaf kind of flies in and flutters around. And notice that the leaf is also casting a shadow onto the tree trunk. And that is one element that is, that is essential to this project to really sell it and to kind of give it that realistic kind of feel. Because if that shadow wasn't there, that would take away a lot of the realism in this. So, I have a image of a ginkgo leaf that I got off of Stock Exchange. Free again. One of my favorite resources. So we're going to go ahead and drop this leaf into our comp. And we'll make it a 3D layer. We're going to scale it down to about 14. Now this is kind of, some of this stuff may get a little tricky depending on how big your images is, how uh, big your comp is, and then using that object in 3D space, it can get a little confusing with how much you should scale it up versus how much you need to roll it back in Z space. And you're just going to have to kind of fool around with that just to get everything just right. So the way I like to animate things is I kind of go in different passes. And so I'm going to do a very multi kind of dimensional uh, position and rotation animation here, uh, I'm going to kind of do it in passes. So the first thing I always like to do is animate the position first and get that kind of floating around. Then I go ahead and add the rotation to it, and then I, I keep building it on from there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we want it to kind of come out from the top here, and we will set our position keyframe here. 
we want it to, we actually want this to start at about one second. We don't want it to happen right away. And let's just give a check to what I have done on our previous animation. We'll go ahead and solo this layer just so we can see what we've done. See, here's the motion path that we've taken here. A couple of keyframes, lands in place, and whoosh, takes off again, flies away. Okay, so it starts right about here at 20 frames, actually. So I'll go back to 20. We don't have to make this exact. All right. And one, there's a couple different way and philosophies, again, on doing position keyframing. Let me just get my timing set here. We want this to settle in right at 420. We'll go ahead and copy that. And... We'll paste that in there. Go to 420. There's a couple, yeah. There's a, there's a couple of philosophies on how you should animate position and things like that. One one of the ways that I like to do it is I just get my hard start, my hard end, and then I animate things in the middle. And there's also a couple different ways you can do that. Oops. Uh, one of them is to go ahead and just kind of ramp. You just kind of go in the middle somewhere and you say, well, I want this to flutter once and then twice and then down. So we'll kind of come here. And at this point, I think I kind of want the leaf to be over here. And we'll drop it back in Z space. And then we'll kind of move around here. And it should be, oh, I don't know, somewhere here. And maybe a little forward in Z space. And you kind of just start animating like this. And it, there's really, and actually that probably won't look good. We probably kind of want to flip these. We want that to fly in and then this to fly in here. What you really have to do to really get a nice kind of organic looking animation and um, to actually get this one, took me quite a while to really get it, is you really just want to kind of eyeball things. If you start looking at numbers and you start, um, you start messing around and dragging values in here, you're kind of, you're really not doing what you need to do. You just kind of need to look at this curve, look at the uh, interpolation dots in here to really get a good sense of how this is going to animate, how smooth it's going to flow. Because we, we're going for the look of we, as if this were being blown by the breeze. So we want it to kind of whisk away and then slow down and flutter and then whew, another breeze comes by and it whisks up again. So we're really going to be playing a lot with the animation curves and the speed curves in this too. So once you have this kind of jaggy line, one thing you can go ahead and take your convert vertex tool and then you can kind of make your Bezier splines. And we're doing okay. Let's just go ahead and solo this layer so it flutters pretty good. Uh, let's do a quick RAM preview, see where we are. It's not looking too bad. Still needs a lot of work though. So it kind of flutters in, comes by. That's generally what we want, but you can see the interpolation isn't anywhere near what we're going for. And to really smooth that out, we really need to go ahead and mess with our speed curves here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start by hitting F9 to make these all Bezier keyframes. And wrapping your head around this curve editor can be a pretty daunting task to really figure out what the curves mean and how you want these curves to reflect what you want your animation to do. And to give you an idea, let's go ahead and look at the curve paths for these. So you can see it swoops in here, this is when it's sitting, and then this is when it flies off again. And the way I can best describe this, these curves and what they do and how this graph works is let's take a nice big look at it is when a line is going up okay as this line goes up an object is accelerating when a line is going down it's decelerating if a line is straight it's going at a constant speed okay and down here you can see this is zero so when a point is down here at zero that means an object is stopped it's stationary and as it goes up, the higher it goes, the faster it's moving. 100, 200, these are all in pixels per second. So you see at the top of this, um, the top of this graph, it's flying at a maximum of 946.83 pixels per second. 
This one's even faster at 1500 pixels per second and so on. But you can see that as it goes, it speeds up and then slows down. And that's what those easy ease keyframes do. Speeds up and slows down, speeds up and then slows down. Uh, and that's not, although that's better than what we had, that's still not exactly what we want because that's not going to give us the smoothest motion and the most realistic motion because in real life, this leaf would never really stop completely in midair, um, but it wouldn't go a constant speed either. So you can see right here as it's going, that's really not what we're going for at all. So what you have to do is you kind of just have to play with it until you get an animation curve that you're happy with. And you can see what this curve shows. And let's go ahead and we'll set our work area there. We'll go ahead and look at the motion of this leaf. And then we'll look at it in relation to these speed curves and we'll try to kind of make some sense of this. So it comes down, slows, blows, and then that last little, that's kind of what sells it right there. So it kind of whisks in, whisks back, so gets blown again and whisks in and really comes to a slow stop. So it's so right here, it's decelerating, it's decelerating the whole time as if it were fluttering in. And then it comes down and then it picks up a little speed but then slows down again. So it picks up a little speed, slows down again. But if you notice, these keyframes are not down at zero. So it never actually comes to a stop. Comes down, flutters again. And then whoosh, look at this, this big steep acceleration here. So it's gonna get blown again, like a little gust of wind. Whoosh, came by and gave it a little blow and it, it whisked it off there. And then there's this long, gradual slow down here. It slows down quickly at first and then as this smooths out, it slows down really slowly and really settles in nice and slowly into that position as if it were just fluttering down and falling on to the tree trunk. And then you can see our interpolation uh, dots on our motion path here reflect that too. So these, since these dots are spread far apart, it's going fast. And you can see right there, see it's going nice and fast here. It's also going nice and fast in this area. The dots are spread apart. But then these dots get packed together right here at the end where it, shoo, it slows down and eases really nice and easy into that, into that stop. And then at the end here, you could see it, it instantly goes from zero velocity up to well, right around here, we're at 700 pixels per second already. So it's like it very suddenly ramps up as if a gust of wind came by, blew it along, and then eases into its next kind of keyframes. Again, never stopping, because these are higher up. And then it quickly, whoosh, as it wipes the screen, it really ramps up and picks up its speed as if it's coming at you. So I'm not really gonna go through this um, here, but what you, what you just need to do is kind of take these keyframes and just kind of pull them around like this. If we could kind of quickly mirror what we had there. And you can pull these in all these different directions to get that kind of speed curve that you want. And this, this actually isn't too far off from what we had, from what we had initially. Let's just go ahead and see what that quickly did right there. But it really takes a lot of tweaking to get the motion that you want and to get the look that you want right. Um, and the next thing to do, of course, is to mess with our rotation. And this really is, uh, there's no science to this either. You just have to think to yourself, in the world of physics, how would this leaf blow around? If the wind was blowing it, where would it catch? Would the stem be up? Would the stem be down? Would it be facing this way, facing that way? And um, also considering people have to know what this is. They have to see the full... Um, the full width of it. If if it were just flat all the time, they wouldn't know what it is. So you have to show people what it is so they get it. So we're going to animate our rotation here. And I like to just go ahead and drop keyframes in for all of them just to start our animation. And whether or not I use them all doesn't matter. Uh, we'll change um, our controls here from orientation to rotation because if you do it um, with orientation, it's going to give you some problems depending on... I find if you animate orientation versus rotation, you do get problems with it flipping the wrong way as it interpolates from one keyframe to the next. So I, I find I have better success with rotation. So we want it to come in. It's going to start to come in that way. And then as it gets to this keyframe, we're gonna, it's going to kind of ramp up like that. And you just kind of eyeball it here. Whoosh. 
And then it goes along, and then the wind came from behind, so it's going to blow it that way. So we'll kind of rotate it that way as if the wind kind of blew it that way. And then it blows it around again. So that's not too bad either there. Smooth into place. One thing you'll notice that I did is I didn't line up the rotation keyframes with the position keyframes. And you're going to find that as we smooth these out, that's going to give it a much more organic look. As if it kind of came into place and then, because if we line these up with it, then it's not going to look as organic. Um, now you're asking yourself, uh, where's the 3D warps? This isn't a 3D uh, leaf at all. That's a two-dimensional leaf. That doesn't look realistic at all. Well, I said I was going to give you some tips on how to work um, quicker with render time and things like that, and this is one of those tips. We're going to set up this whole animation with this whole motion path, and we're going to get it just right with a regular old stock, um, simple image like this. And then after that, we add the 3D warps effect to another layer and tie that layer to this layer. And that will um, allow us to be able to set up the animation quickly with quick um, render times and preview times. Um, and then when we're all done and everything looks good, we add the 3D warps to that, and then we can add our warping to the layer. And that'll uh, speed up the process quite a bit because adding 3D warps to a layer um, will slow down your render time. So doing it this way will keep things, um, keep things moving pretty quick. Now that we've got our leaf and our background in place, the next thing we need to make is our little text box and our text animation. Uh, not going to win any After Effects awards with this animation. Nothing too hard here. Um, not a really big deal. Uh, so we'll go ahead and make that really quick. All right, we'll just make a new solid here. We'll call it white box, comp size. Go ahead and set that. Hit Q to bring up our mask tool. We'll just draw a quick mask just like that. Um, doesn't, doesn't have to be too perfect. Uh, we'll change our opacity to about 45%. Then to get that stroke around it, um, we will just go ahead and duplicate that mask, bring our opacity back up to 100, and then we'll duplicate this mask, change it to subtract, and then we'll just bring that in just a little bit right there. There we go. And now we got a nice stroke around that. And then we will parent this to that bottom one. And then we'll do all our animation on this and they'll behave together nice. And so we'll just do a simple position animation where we will start it over here. Hold down shift to constrain this movement. And actually we want this to come in right when about there. That's where we want this to happen. And then we'll have that fly in. Uh, and actually to get this back in the center, L80 divided by 2, there we go, right back in the center. Add a quick easy ease on that one, and if you, know, you really want to get funky, you can go ahead and uh, mess with your speed curves here too. Just draw that out to give it a more, a more um, smooth transition back into there. Uh, so that's no big deal. We'll turn off our leaf just to speed up render time here. Nothing big deal. No big deal there. Make sure motion blur is checked so it'll be nice and blurry when we take care of that. Add our text layers. A uh, little trick I like to do is to hit all the modifier keys, Command, Option, Shift, T, and that activates a text layer right in the middle of your comp. And we'll call this a year of growth. Oops, capital. Okay. Modifier text. Arial black. Uh, actually, no, I use just regular Arial. There we go. Bring that up. And we'll position that. It's right in the center. That's good. Give a quick check to our title safe. Bold. Scaled up just a little bit. And there we go. Your growth. And then we'll just make our second line and Innovation. Spelled right? Yep. And font I used Times New Roman. Right there, and we're going to change this color to a nice red. Nice easy red. 
everyone's favorite color for video. Works out perfectly, especially in broadcast. There we go. Okay, now to have our text animate. And I'm not too concerned with keyframe position here at this point. We can go ahead and work that kind of stuff out later. So I want to twirl down here. We'll want to add a text animation to this. And the first one we want to do on this one is a simple scale animation. And we'll also add some blur to it. So this one's going to be pretty simple. We want the scale to start at 0. And then we're only going to blur in the Y by about 50. OK, and then if you go to your range selector to make this a nice smooth animation, um, this is covered in other tutorials, so I'm not really going to go over it that in, in, in detail here. We're going to change this shape to ramp up. And then what we're going to animate is the offset here. And we're going to go from negative 100 all the way to 100. And that will animate the properties that we set down here, our blur and our scale. So go ahead and set that to 100, move up a little bit, and set this to positive 100. There we go. Turn this off just so we can speed rendering a little bit here. There we go, that looks nice. And then with our innovation layer, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna enable our 3D, per character 3D, since we're gonna have this one kind of fly around and kind of do a bunch of stuff. And we're going to animate a whole mess of properties here. We're going to animate position. And we're going to add also rotation. And let's go ahead and add opacity. And maybe we'll go ahead and do, oh, I don't know, tracking. And let's uh, just one more just for kicks. We'll do blur as well. So position. We're going to want to go ahead and let's see, we'll just kind of move this back and kind of up. And this is what what I'm really kind of going for here. We'll move it a little forward too. Is just um, as if these letters were kind of being blown in by the wind too. And we can spend two days doing these letters to get them uh, really, you know, organic looking like our leaf. But I don't really want to spend all my time there. So I'm just going to kind of go ahead and give these some random kind of values. It doesn't even really matter too much. You just kind of pull them around just to get them, uh, just to get them, uh, give them some good randomness. Um, we'll even pull up our tracking here, set our opacity down and just ramp up the blur. And then uh, same thing with our range selector. Uh, go to advanced, ramp up, and we'll end. So you can see now, there we go. Everything kind of rotates in, but it's not really, that's not what we want. We want it to be more random. So randomize order. Click on. There we go. So now they kind of flutter in. And I think what's not looking right is the blur. I think we need to set, we only need to blur in one direction. Incidentally, if you don't know, when you hit the space bar and toggle the space bar, you can not only move around your canvas, but also your timeline, which is a, uh, a great little tip if you got all kinds of stuff happening in your timeline. Um, there we go. So we got this kind of floating, <whistles> kind of flutters down. And we'll just go ahead and match. Um, we can even just copy these keyframes. Um, doesn't even matter. We'll just set our offset there, paste those keyframes. And <whistles> there we go. All right, hit U just so we see only our animated properties. We can move these. Um, space them out, drag a marquee, you can smooth them all in. Okay, there we go, that's not looking too bad. And of course, you know, you just want to refine this as it goes. Um, add motion blur to them, of course. There we go. All right. So not too bad, everything is just about in place, except for the big part of it all, the 3D warps, which is next. So now let's get on with the fun. Let's add uh, Zach's works uh, 3D warps to this composition. Um, I've, as I've already explained, we set up our position animation nice and easily with a, a simple 3D layer, and then we're going to add the 3D warps to it. And that's going to kind of speed up the whole process. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new solid, and we're going to call this 3D warps, and we're going to make this 
comp size and give it a nice kind of strong color that makes it really stand out from everything else. And there's our color there. We'll also change this color to purple. And I think I had it as fuchsia in the other comp. There we go. And we'll drop this down by our layer there. And we'll go ahead and solo that layer so we know what we're working with. And we're going to add our warps to that 3D layer warp. And as you can see, pow, nothing really happens. A little bit of shading. What we want to do with 3D warps is the way it works is we don't want to apply it to this leaf layer. Um, we want to go ahead, we want to apply it to a solid and then use this layer as a controller and as a tracker for our 3D warps layer. That's where we're going to get the best use of 3D warps from in this instance. Now, before we go on, I just kind of want to show you, um, just for fun, um, what 3D warps can do. So we'll just go ahead and make a little comp here. We'll just make a, we'll just put in another layer there. Because the 3D warps plugin, aside from what I'm going to do here, which is a very kind of practical use for it, we'll just go ahead and let that render it out, is that it really, um, it, it does a lot of stuff. We'll drop our resolution down. And the way it basically works is, and in, 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 in its most uh, simplest form, is what you have is a layer. You tell it what layer to you want it to affect. In this case, we're just going to use this cell, and we're going to bend it around. And then you have these three warp parameters. And these are, these are what gives um, your layer um, its, its motion. And so you can tell it where you want it to bend from, what axis you want it to bend on, and then it goes ahead and does its bending. Can't see much happening here until we add a camera to this and really make it a true 3D comp. And as we rotate our camera around, you can see that this has become a tried and true 3D layer. And that, I mean, that is 3D, and that is going to interact um, in a very 3D way with your cameras. So as we bend this around, you can see that is a true 3D, 3D layer that is behaving um, with, uh, with the cameras um, in a very nice way. And then we can add another warp to this. So we'll just tell it how we want it to, how we want it to behave. And as you can see we got kind of a magazine kind of look going on here. Um, there's a whole bunch of different, different parameters here that you can um, add into it. We can add a third warp to it, z-axis, let's just say, oh, I don't know, linear wave. I mean, there's all kinds of um, options with this where you can really get these things doing some crazy stuff. And you can see, again, with our camera, as we rotate this around, this interacts with our camera um, in a completely 3D way. Um, also, it will interact with lights. Give me one second here before I do that. You can see there's a camera and lights option down here. You can use its own camera um, or and its own lights, or you can use the comp camera and the comp lights. So we'll just tell it it's already using the comp camera. We'll tell it to use the comp lights. There are no lights right now. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll add a light to this. As a note, um, it will not work with point lights. They will not affect it. You have to use either spotlight, ambient, or parallel light. So if you go ahead and throw your point light on it, you'll be like, hey, it's not working. What's the deal? So as we throw our uh, parallel light on there, you can see, oh, look at that. Look at that. Whoa. Look at that. That's some pretty cool stuff right there. Okay, so we're going to be using um, to cast the shadow of our ginkgo leaf. To get this shadow, we're going to be using comp lights. We're going to be using parallel lights and ambient lights to get this all to work. So briefly, that's kind of what uh, 3D warps can do. Um, actually, let me show you just for fun. Let me show you, we'll reset this. Um, all right, that's for later. We'll show you some of the presets they have in there, which really kind of show you some of the cool stuff that it does. Now look at this. This has only got a couple warps um, associated with it. Um, these grids are here because it's showing the grid guide. But to kind of give you an idea of some of the crazy things you can do, if we set this to zero, and then we go ahead and we start ramping this up, look at how this thing kind of evolves. It's kind of like 
animating the evolution and fractal noise. I mean, look at that. It just goes and goes and goes. I mean, you can really make some very kind of organic, kind of bizarre, you know, outer space alien type looking stuff from this. And go ahead and twirl down our next warp there. This is this is doing some other. I mean, and then if you animate these all in conjunction with each other, you have them all kind of going, kind of wrapping around. You can really get some crazy looking stuff. And they are all. Oops, you know why it's not working with the camera? Because this is using. Here we are. We'll just say use comp camera, use comp lights. There we go. Now look at this. <laughs> I don't even know where we are anymore. Let's uh, zoom out. Yeah, there we go. And look at this. Look at this crazy thing. And that that is just a single that is just a single uh 3D layer. Just a single solid layer. There we go. Interacting with our lights, shading all around it. You could have multiple layers of this kind of happening all in the same composition. I mean, it, you can really kind of go fly off the handle with this kind of thing. So let's get back on track here. Let's um add this to our leaf. So, we'll take our 3D warps and the first thing we want to do is under our transform controls as we want to tell it to track um, that ginkgo leaf layer. Okay, and now it's going to track that layer. There we are. You can see it's going to fly around, but it still looks like a magenta solid and not like a leaf. So under our color controls, we will tell it to use that ginkgo leaf as its color. Oh, there we go. All right, looking good. And if we slow this too, you'll be able to see that boom, there's our leaf right under it, our 2D leaf with our 3D leaf. And by default, um, 3D warps, actually we'll change the resolution on this so we can see previews a little quicker. Um, it adds a little bit of curve to it by default. And that's our warp one kind of happening. So you can see it, you can flutter there. There we go. You can make a butterfly if we wanted to. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate um, these warps in order to make it kind of flutter in the breeze as if it was being blown around. Um, and then I'm going to show you there's a couple other um, gotchas along the way that I'll also show you too. So we'll go ahead and we'll bring up our position keyframes here so we can kind of mask this with it. And we're just going to want to change this warp here and then we're going to want to add a second uh, bend from center y x-axis warp here and we'll go ahead and keyframe that reveal our keyframes so we bring it into this keyframe well let's see kind of flew down that way it comes in so it kind of makes sense that it's bending this way but then as it flies again this way well we're going to kind of want to we kind of want to make it bend back the other way so we'll just drag these to the negative you know, something like that. So it comes down, flies in. Actually, we want these keyframes to be here. And then psh, it's going to get blown back the other way. We'll go ahead and turn this layer off so we can see what's happening. Line these keyframes up. And then it gets blown around again this way. So it kind of makes sense, mm, you know, maybe to maybe to kind of bend even a little more and this is all you know this is very subjective you know it's just what do you think space and time are going to do to this to this poor little leaf getting tossed in the wind uh the last thing i did to kind of to kind of sell this it kind of flutters in as it lands i just went ahead and added just a little kind of bring that down to about zero and then bring this forward just a little bit and then pump that up to about 20 and that's to about 14 something like that just to give it a little bounce at the end so boom and it bounces and then it comes to rest uh, go ahead and select all those smooth them out mess with the mess with the um curves if you need to there you go so now you can see in my preview why we did this with we animated everything first because you can see render times go a little bit slow when you um, add uh, the 3D warps to it. So mess around with that as much as you want, and then you can add your keyframes again as it flies out. I'm not going to spend time too much time with that. Now you can see there's a couple things we need to address here. Um, one of them is the lighting. 
And later as this flies around in the back, before I do that, um, what I'm going to want to do is copy these keyframes so we get the same keyframes. Turn this off and just paste those keyframes there. Okay, so this flies in. There we go. I think I pasted them in the wrong place. There we go. Okay, so this flies in. There we go. There's a couple gatches here. All right, not looking too bad. And one of them is the lighting. So we want to add our own lighting to this because that's going to add. Um, that's going to enable us to have uh, to to use the the shadows that we want to use. So we'll tell it to use. Um, there's no comp camera. There's no camera involved, so it doesn't matter. But we'll tell it to use the comp lights. And right now there's no lights happening, so it's really it's still not really doing anything. So we're going to go ahead and add a parallel light. There we go. And we'll just kind of put this in a position kind of where we think the sun is coming from. And it's going to kind of fly in there. And this is going to kind of depend on, this is really going to come into play when we get our shadow layer kind of happening. So we should probably take care of that uh, at this point. Turn this off. We don't need that. Okay. Now to make the shadow, let's go ahead and turn some other layers off. So we can kind of speed things up here. As we need to use an old trick here um, involved with kind of adding some, we kind of need to make a fake tree trunk here and a fake surface, 3D surface that these lights can cast shadows on. So to do that, we'll make a, we'll call this shadow catcher. Uh, we'll make it comp size, which will probably change later. We'll make it white. It's important that it's white. Drag this down. Make it a 3D layer. And what we want to do is we hit AA to bring up its uh, material options. We don't need it to cast shadows. We don't want it to accept lights, but we do want it to accept shadows. That's important. And then what you want to do is take your rotation tool, and then you want to kind of position this um, 3D, this solid here, as if it were kind of lined up with that, with that trunk. And then you can take it and you can scale it way up. And you just kind of you kind of need to just put it in position as if it were that trunk. Also paying attention to where it's going to be um, involved with your shadows. Because this is going to take some trial and error to get it to kind of work out right. So you get this in position and then you're going to activate this as your shadow catcher. And what you have to do is you have to tell 3D Warps that you want what layer you want to catch the shadows that it's going to be casting. And so under your camera lights, you come to Shadow Catcher Plane, set this to your Shadow Catcher, and then we still don't see a shadow, and that's because probably our light here is not set to cast shadows. There we go. There's our shadows right there. And then you can add, you can change um, one kind of, this is another kind of one of those tricks is that uh, in the light options for a parallel light, there is no um, diffusion um, available. Um, so, and you definitely want that diffusion to be changed. So what you need to do, this is kind of a little trick, is you can change this um, back to a spotlight, change your diffusion to you know 50 or whatever have you. And then it's going to go ahead and give you um, that diffusion that you want on your shadow. And there we go. Now you have your diffusion. You can change your darkness to, you know, however much you think is going to work. There we go. And I like to, using the spotlight kind of creates, um, you know, a few headaches in that this leaf is kind of flying all around and it's going to go in and out of the cone of light, which is why I do like to use a parallel light. So if we change that back to parallel, it'll still retain those diffusion values um, and that darkness value that you can you can change as well. And if uh, you can see our diffusion did change a little bit there, so you can kind of go back, um, shift command Y, and uh, you can go ahead and change um, this diffusion if you want. See, it's not going to let me change that here. Um, so if I change this back to a spot, and then I change my diffusion to oh I don't know 10, like that, and then we change this back to parallel. Now it's going to go ahead and give you the diffusion you want. 
Um, and then you're going to need to go ahead and kind of play with the parameters here to get these shadows to line up so it looks as if it's going to rest on there. Um, but this still doesn't look realistic at all. There's a big white plane here. Uh, easily fixed by just simply changing um, the transfer mode of this to multiply. There we go. Completely disappear. And you can see that um, the shadow is there. The white has completely disappeared, but our shadow is there. And if we kind of go up here a little bit, there we go. There's our shadow right there being cast. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead because um, we're going to get some other problems here as this as this leaf kind of flutters around It's going to kind of still kind of go in and out of um, the light and The top and bottom are going to reflect light in different ways because 3d warps really likes to make itself very um, Realistic in terms of how it interacts with the lights um, in this situation. We can see almost everything's lit. There's a very um, omnidirectional light happening in this scene. The light isn't really being cast from a very particular direction. I mean, it is kind of, we can see shadows here, so it's kind of coming from this way, which is why I put my parallel light over here. But we still want things to be lit, so we're going to go ahead and just add a new uh, ambient light to the scene. There we go. And now that makes it really bright. So we're going to um, just change the intensity, bring the intensity of that way down to somewhere around 20, 10, 20, something like that. And then you're going to have um, this, this light, this leaf will now be illuminated kind of from all directions and it won't really kind of come, you know, the shadows. Now, if you had a more contrasty scene, that's kind of really cool because you can have an object kind of fly in and out of a cone of light. Um, and you could really make something very stylized. You can have a really dark scene. You can have a cone of light. Um, and then you can have objects kind of flying in and out of that, and they'll fly in and out of that cone of light, which will look really cool, too. So we're pretty much there with everything. Uh, I've done a little more housekeeping here, and I'm going to show you just a couple more workflow uh, techniques to happen here and a couple more polishing moves. Again, I've color-coded things. Um, these are the white box layers. I've split these layers here um, because I'll show you why I split that here really quick because as it floats down... The leaf is going to come up, and then as it comes down here, it needs to go from behind that layer to in front of it. So you can see right in there, a little bit of smoke and mirrors, right where this cut is. I cut the layers from in front of it in the stack to behind it in the stack as it kind of rolls under there. So it's going to go from behind it to in front of it as it wipes off the screen. Okay, you can see everything kind of interacting there, the lights, you can see the shadow, see the shadow as it casts itself around there. There we go. You got to you got to be careful um, that you don't break the plane of that shadow catcher with your uh, 3D leaf here because it will dip in there and will get artificially cut off and you'll kind of lose that. There we go. Everything looks nice. Everything comes in, flutters away. Um, you'll notice here now there's motion blur on this. That's what we're going to talk about next and how to work with motion blur and to maximize your efficiency with, with motion blur. Um, let's go to a 3D warps layer and our effects controls. And these work with regular old um, After Effects motion blur. You can toggle that on and toggle your switches on here. Um, but I want to make, make you aware of these options here. You click up here, you get these options. There's a couple options here for various um, more advanced features. This is the one you want to pay attention to here, motion blur passes. Just like in your comp settings where you have um, uh, your motion blur steps and your passes and your sampling and your comp settings, this controls this here. I have this set to 12. Um, I think the default is 4, and it goes all the way up to 32. Um, so 12 to 16 is kind of an After Effects default. Um, this is how many different steps it's going to give you. Let's bring this back to 12, how many different samples it's going to give you um, as it um, renders its motion blur. So you can see here where we can really see this motion blur happening. You can see here, um, those are the motion blur passes. And um, the faster it, the faster your animation is going to move, the more motion blur steps you're going to want to have. This one moves pretty quick at the end. So we have 12. We could probably bump that up to 16 or 20. Um, to give it even smoother motion blur. If things are moving slow, you can get away with four, six, maybe eight. Um, but you do want to make sure you pay attention to that because if you have a very fast moving object and you don't ramp up those motion blur samples, your motion blur isn't going to be as smooth. Um, but when you do add motion blur to the 3D warps, 
you're going to take a hit on your render time and your preview time. So one thing I've done um, is that I've split this layer, you can see. Okay, let's just go ahead and we'll select all these layers and we'll toggle our parameters. And you can see, here's our key. I just duplicated the layer and I just split the layer according to when it's moving and when it's not moving. So here in the middle, when this uh, layer is not moving at all, and we'll go ahead and we'll just bring down our resolution there. When this is not moving at all, on this layer, I don't have motion blur checked. On the, le on the times when it is moving, that's where I have my motion blur. Because even though this layer is just sitting there doing nothing, uh, it's still, After Effects is still going to render all 12, 16, whatever have you, of those motion blur passes on it. So it's going to be rendering these, these stationary frames as slow as it's going to be rendering these motion frames. Um, and you do take, um, you will be taking a hit. So um, since it spends the bulk of its time of this composition just sitting there doing nothing, I wanted to make a layer that didn't have motion blur on it, and that's going to speed up uh, the whole uh, render time of this. It's probably going to increase, the, you know, drop the render time of this uh, very significantly. So that's a little tip for you there. Last thing I'm going to do just to give this a little bit of style is I'll simply add a vignette to it. We'll just go ahead and add some black. Add that right there. Bring that down right there. And we'll just double click on our mask tool just to give us a quick mask. All around it, ramp up that. There we go. And bring the opacity down. There we go. Just give, our, give ourselves a vignette around it just to give it a little more stylized look. And this already has a pretty good amount of contrast, but if we want, we can add a little curves adjustment layer here. You just throw some curves on this, just give it a little slight little S curve there, just to kind of make things pop just a little bit more. And we'll toggle that off, toggle it back on. There we go. I mean, our picture was already had a pretty good amount of contrast. Um, but that just gives it just a little bit more right there. So there you have it, folks. In fact, let's look at let's look at this one. Creating a realistic leaf animation with Zaxworks 3D Warps plugin. Great plugin, awesome for organic effects like this, leaves, paper, uh, newspapers. You can maybe do some kind of flag effects. Um, and then again, kind of real surreal, fractal type organic things where things kind of evolve and kind of move all over the place. Um, hope I showed you some good tips on how to use everything um, to give you a more efficient workflow. And uh, that'll just about do it for this tutorial on Zaxworks awesome 3D Warps plugin. Until next time, I am Jeff from Sweet Take, and we'll see you later.